Iniciamos el coloquio Nuevos Enfoques de Cooperación Público-Privada para Impulsar el Desarrollo Turístico Más Sostenible. Participan Taleb Rifai, Secretario General de la OMT, Jean-Claude Bombardin, Consejero Delegado del Consejo Mundial de Turismo y Modera José Luis Zoreda, Vicepresidente Ejecutivo de ExcelTour. Okay. Hey, close, Buenas tardes. Ya empieza a ser un poco larga la jornada. Vamos a intentar avivar un poco el debate con uh, dos personas que es la primera vez que se sientan juntas en un debate cara a cara, lo cual significa que algo está cambiando también en el ámbito de la cooperación internacional público-privada. Dos organizaciones que hasta ahora se miraban un poco de reojo han aceptado la invitación para, en este marco de esta conferencia, poder debatir conjuntamente cómo podemos caminar mejor el sector público y el sector privado en el futuro. Antes de entrar aquí, uno de los dos panelistas, no voy a decir cuál, denominaba esto The Battle of Giants. I will go into English in this Battle of Giants to start with the first question to both of you. If tourism is so relevant as starting in Spain and around the world, as we noticed in the course of this morning, what are we doing bad to be so far behind the social recognition and the political recognition of what we represent? Because something we must be doing wrong, no? If that happens all around the world, what could we do to improve? If you allow me, We're two against one here. So I'll start with the public sector. Public sector. To start with, you're, we're not two against one. It's a joke. We're three together. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the issue with the tourism industry is that it probably is the victim of its own success in the last three to four decades. The industry has grown so fast, so successfully, And its, its growth has been faster than the public realm has been able to come to grip with. And that includes, of course, politicians, decision makers, and everybody. It is not an industry that was given enough time to be acknowledged. And if we look historically at all the other industries and all the other sectors, you need time to establish an industry in the minds and in the realm of the people. I would not worry about us doing something wrong or, uh, uh, or otherwise, I would simply concentrate on making sure that we tell the story just the way it is. And the more we put it together, the more we knit it together, because it's still a fragmented picture, it's not a one picture, uh, then our job would become easier. So it's, in short, it's not something we did wrong, it's a consequence of a historical evolution and development of this industry. Would you share that view, Jean-Claude? Well, uh, you know, um, I think Taleb is right in a certain way when he says that this industry, uh, first of all, is very diverse in size, in, uh, in, in, in jobs, in uh, functions. But what is important here is that this industry is certainly the most resilient one in the world. And when WTTC was founded, Our founder members said, uh, what can we do to raise awareness of travel and tourism? And that's what you say. But some of them were saying, leave us alone. <laughs> we do a better job when the governments ignore us than when we are here, except, and here I agree with uh, Taleb, is that we have reached a stage, 9.7% of the world GDP, 220 million jobs. We have reached a stage where we are here and have an important mission in economies. Now, I would not agree with you that uh, uh, it's, not, it, it's, it's not recognized all over the world. Uh, look what the Chinese just said. Uh, they consider travel and tourism as one of the pillars of their economy. And more and more countries start to realize it. 
But what is lacking is that we don't make enough, I would say, noise about what we are. And that's why uh, when uh, we, uh, we met together uh, years ago. It was a good day. It was a very good day because we decided that we have to not look over the shoulder, we have to look in the same direction. And that is, that is exactly it, you know. And you, in each country, will have to, we have to do your, your homework. What you're doing at Excel Tour is exactly the right thing. Uh, um, you know, the big danger is that we haven't said enough and not loud enough how important we are. And I see when I meet ministers, and uh, uh, I usually meet ministers of tourism because they are my allies when I go to see a government, but I tend to see heads of governments and uh, minister of finance, minister of economy. Those are the people to convince. Those are the people where we have to do an effort on. Because they know the figures and they, uh, you know, polit politicians, but they, only <clears throat> they only are following you if they have an interest in following you. And their interest is to create jobs. And especially nowadays, it's the right time to do it. Well, that was my second question. Aren't we victims of very primitive indicators to assess the cause of our industry? Isn't it the time to start changing, counting people, moving from here to there as the main thermometer of success? Shouldn't we put the emphasis on economic impact, job creation, and therefore we may be perceived by more developed indicators in what we really represent rather than only counting how many foreigners cross our borders? But, uh, uh, José Luis, that's what we have been saying for the last 20 years. You know, it's not only inbound, it's domestic market. When I met uh, last week the chairman of the Chinese National Tourism Authority, and they said it this morning, I understand, 1.9 billion domestic tourists. It's much more important that the 100 which are going to China and the 105 which are leaving China. We, we have to, that's true. We have to get a new approach, and that's, I must say, that's what we have been doing. Mr. Prime Minister, it's that million jobs, it's that part of your GDP. You have a political responsibility to look into that. Why am I saying that, Taleb? Because sometimes when, uh, and it happens all over the world, and I'm not undermining the extraordinary job that WTO <coughs> does, but sometimes when we make assessments on how the cause of the industry is, it sounds to me like a big supermarket gives a press conference and stop by saying how many people went into the shop and nothing less. And that finishes there. And say, well, it's important how many people get in the shop, definitely. But more important, it was the average expenditure. But even more important is that they spend it in high margin or low margin products in order to assess at the end on the contribution and to measure the relevance on the end contribution that the industry provides. But roughly all over the world, the main measurement, even by the media, is how many foreigners have arrived to the country. There and are, there we stop. There are two sides to this, to this issue, uh, Jose Luis. Uh, let, let's state the facts. In the early 90s, we developed the tool called tourism satellite accounts. Only in the early 90s, and not before that because the industry did not reach a stage of development where a specific tool was able to measure even the most basic indicators that you are saying. And the results of the development of the TSA were tremendous, because for the first time, there was a tool to measure two very simple things, two very basic things, international arrivals and tourism receipts. And those alone, for at least the last two to two and a half decades, were very powerful tools in doing what Jean-Claude was saying, in trying to use a very concrete scientific arguments vis-a-vis -vis the decision makers. Now we are at a stage that says that is not enough. But only now we are at that stage because there is much more than that that is needed. We shouldn't underestimate 
the value of TSA, particularly on the economic side, because the issue of the tourism receipts, not the arrivals, but the receipts, which is connected to the arrivals somehow, is a very important thing. Now, you tell me we don't have exact figures on, on, on employment. Yes, you're right. WTTC has its own estimates, and they're very close to reality, but they are not yet a completely developed statistical tool. Domestic tourism, of course, we still don't have it. Some countries are doing it better than others. But the reality on the ground is that even TSA, the very basic tool, is only applied in less than 17% of the countries and destinations around the world. So there's a mission that's not accomplished yet. We need to move it into a different level, but we need to also make sure that there is capacity to be able to produce it. On the last point I want to make is on domestic vis-a-vis -vis international. It is absolutely correct. We are, when we are looking at international arrivals, we are only looking at the tip of the iceberg. In many countries, we saw the Minister of India saying today that it's only 7%. 93% of the activity of tourism is domestic, uh, uh, is domestic tourism. But we should distinguish the difference between the two. Domestic tourism is very important in creating jobs, stimulating the economy, building infrastructure, establishing the culture of travel, and many, many other things. But domestic tourism does not balance trade. Domestic tourism does not bring in fresh income. It, these are facts. We have to, we, we should not, we should not, uh, 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 we should at, not under, underestimate the value of what is creating the bulk of travel, mm -hmm. but we should also know and understand why have we uh, concentrated for, for obvious reasons, because we wanted to show, as government, I'm speaking in the name of the public sector now, wanted to demonstrate the impact of international tourism on the, the balance of trade. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go to go much further into sophisticating this argument on TSA. I, what I was trying to present is precisely the value of TSAs, and maybe not necessarily to have such a sophisticated Ferrari that not many countries can buy Ferraris, while they can buy a very good Opel Corsa, which may take them halfway through, and at the end, be the domestic or be the foreign, with the exception that one brings foreign currencies, they create <coughs> jobs, and they should raise the awareness of what we represent. Okay. Okay. Now, let me go to the second question I have. When we talk of public and private cooperation, we always refer as if that ends in marketing and promotion. How could we do to improve in countries like Spain, where among the various conclusions of today, it looks like we have a number of competitive challenges, which are not to put more advertising in the London underground, but to reshuffle and to review and reposition the product. How could we do to extend public-private cooperation to the level of product development, urban planning, policy making? and not to leave it just in how we spend the budget of promotion. Well, uh, sorry to give you an answer. First with India, talking about India. Uh, uh, I, 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 we have an initiative there, and uh, uh, the, what I told the Indian government is don't make any promotion as long as your infrastructure is not in good shape as long as your product is not in good shape. Why do you spend unnecessarily millions of dollars when you have only five million uh, visitors a year, out of which half of them are Indians living in the States? Coming back to what you said, I think Spain is a perfect example in what we try to induce our governments <clears throat> to do. You have a major issue here, which is a kind of inadaptation of the product to uh, the market. You have a different decision level. We have the central government, you have the provinces, uh, you have fantastic entrepreneurs, you know. Uh, when I compare what's happening in Spain and what has happened in Spain, you have fantastic entrepreneurs. Let's get all those people together. And public and private sector partnership, I fully agree with you, is not about a marketing budget, I pay half, you pay half. Public and private sector partnership is how can we all together, government and private sector, can kind of framework 
a policy for a country like Spain, and you have a hard work to do. It, it's going to take time, and I praise Excel too. It's not because you are here or Sebastian, but you have done and said the right message. Now, our challenge is, and maybe there, uh, Taleb and myself could help you, is to get from prime minister down, people understand what has to be, uh, what, what are the issues, and you sit together and make a joint decision together. And the government has to do the framework, the government has to do the right laws, the government has to understand what the industry needs, the industry has to feed into the government so they take the right decisions. And uh, I think you could be, and uh, what I take out of that day here, you, you, you might have, I wish you will, have started something which would be the richest dialogue which hasn't happened in the world about what can we do with what represents that much of our GDP, that much jobs. So, uh, what is your view, Tal? Yeah, uh, look, public-private partnership is not a choice anymore. There is no going forward in this industry or in any other life affair without public-private partnership. It's not just us, it's every other economic activity, and for that sake, some other activities that are not even economic. So far in the tourism sector, public-private partnership has uh, limited itself, lately even, to two or three uh, basic issues. One of the most uh, visible examples are the NTOs, the National Tourism Organizations, which are the marketing arms of many, many destinations. Where the, the most prevalent model, regardless of the differences between one and the other, is that the government puts in some money, puts in 50% or more of the representation, the private sector represented in different ways, different forms in different countries. They form a board, they form an organization. It's half public, half private. It's in charge of promotion. This model needs to be re-examined. I am not sure that it's a model that, that now can continue to the future. I think it's, it's reached the limit where we need to stop and think about it. There are other examples of public-private partnerships in infrastructure and not product development, but infrastructure development and, and, and operation. We heard from the Minister of Egypt this morning and many other ministers, uh, uh, build, operate, and transfer, uh, uh, private sector and, and, and government invest together in something. What is really still missing, the crux of the matter is what you said, uh, Jose Luis. We need to make sure that the partnership is at the policy level. And this has not happened. This is not happening. It is still happening at the level of the governments making gestures of consultations with the private sector and coming up with either legislations or strategies or policies. The, 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 the tourism industry is based on two very important pillars. One is data and analysis, and two is policy. And unless we see partnership on those two levels, and particularly on the policy level, and the development of particular policies and strategies, then we will always be making gestures towards this concept of public-private partnership, but we will not be really making any difference on the ground. I think it's quite courageous, the, the assessment of Taleb assessing no, I, that I, we I should agree. get involved and, uh, in policy may, making, may, but is may that I, real? May I add something also? Uh, I, I think uh, the angle also with governments is to say, listen, Mr. Government, you are not alone. You are in competition with 181 countries in the world. They want to have a piece of the pie. So you have to look with the entrepreneurs, with the people who invest the money, with the people who hire people to, uh, to, 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 to do the jobs, to, 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 to run the industry, people who create management, who create careers, you have to look how you can compete against the others. Because that's, that's what we are talking about, you know. Uh, we in the private sector, and I agree with Stanley, uh, we have to work with governments, but we in the private sector, we take the risk. And if it doesn't work, we disappear. So uh, what, I, what I want to say here is uh, in each country in the world, 
you have to have what you are trying to do here in Spain, that public and private sector partnership, which will help the country to keep his rank as far as travel and tourism is concerned, or to gain markets in travel and tourism. Uh, what uh, Mr. Sano said before, he said, well, you don't have any uh, connection, air connection between Japan and Spain. How, how could I, me, a Japanese tour operator, uh, send passengers to Spain? And that is a public and private sector issue, isn't it? Let me, let me raise the challenge a little bit higher. You're always talking as if one central entity with one central public sector voice. There are many public sector voices and sometimes too many private sector voices. No, 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 all the time, sure. many, hmm? many stakeholders. Sure. And let's, I want, if you dare to answer, under this new idea that new models of the old, let's say, tourism board should be brought together, how would you, or what advice would you give us in a country like Spain, whether we have 19 different regions, basically all the tourism competence are on the regions, Central government basically has promotion responsibility. How we, could we put together, in the present situation, a new framework or a new way of cooperation going from up to down mm -hmm. and horizontally? Mm -hmm. Would you dare? Well, let me give it a try. And a last question like that. If you know of any good examples around the world that may share a similar okay. uh, situation, that could be something, aside from Spain, not to compromise you with the answer, that should be something to watch as a model to follow for the future. I think one of the very important statements that were heard this morning was from the CEO of TUI uh, when referring to Spain but it's an example that could be, uh, it's a case that could be used in other places. Is we have to distinguish whether the current problem, the current crisis, the current challenge, and we're meeting against that background, is structural or is it due to the current financial difficulty? And I think we have to admit that unless we admit it's a mixture of both, then we are not really being honest with ourselves. To say that the current economic difficulty is responsible for all that, and as a consequence to, to, to refer directly to Spain, that Spain is a victim of the, uh, of the current economic situation, of course it is, but it is also suffering as a result of structural and policy issues that were before. So if we start by that premise, then we can move one, one, uh, one step further in, in uh, uh, the director that, that you have indicated, which is, okay, how do we build a different model and how do we build a different structure uh, uh, under the umbrella of private-public uh, partnership? Especially in a complicated scene like the Spanish scene. You know, you have an added complication here, which is not the case in many of the countries that were represented in destinations here. You have a very, very particular, for lack of a better word, relationship between the regional governments and the central government, between the municipal governments and the regional governments. And sometimes the political considerations outweigh some of the real uh, 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 business considerations that need to be taken into place. And I think this is an issue that has to be resolved at a national level. People have to come to terms. You can't have uh, cities and regions just deciding based on the very limited considerations of their, of their, of their uh, uh, interest, as correct as that may be from the perspective of that. That's not just in Spain, in many other places, without a body of, or a structure that enables to see, okay, what happens if you allow a cost, low-cost carrier to open an airport, or if you make a permit to open an airport in this village that is here. What is this going to do to the other city? What is it going to do to this? What it called? And many, many other decisions on many, many uh, uh, levels like this. I'm afraid that my answer to you is, is, uh, uh, is not what you wanted to hear from me. The issue needs to be resolved on a political level before we can get some real business results and yields in that regard. So can I ask you a less politically correct 
answer? No, but my, my answer is very simple. Uh, <clears throat> you have obviously a product issue. You have a pricing issue. You have a positioning issue, right? That's what we all start with. Having been in companies for years, when my product was not good enough, uh, I had to change it, whatever it costs. And then we go into the adaptation or changing process of the product. In other words, I, I would be like Taleb, but uh, I would come from bottom up because uh, the, 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 you, you need to know among yourself that you are not adapted and you have to go to government and say, listen, we have a problem. We have a problem because the central government doesn't recognize what you just said. We have a problem because the various regional or even city uh, decision makers are doing it uh, not in the, in, in the interest of the, of the whole country. Let's, let's sit together. You know, my, 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 my really sincere uh, perception here is that you have to in very short term, get those people together. And then the public and private sector partnership, you are not going to talk about it like we do today. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And that, that, that's, that's exactly my, would be my advice. Look at countries. Uh, I you know, was trying to figure out which country could be a benchmark, you know. Uh, you, uh, I, I, I see two benchmarks here. One is the USA, the USA, where you don't even have a, 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 a secretary of tourism, whatever. But each state has his own policy of development of travel and tourism. Why does it work? Because tr the USA is still the biggest travel and tourism economy in the world. And you can, because of the, the size, you can do that. You have other countries like China, which has recognized that it is important for them. And due to their special way to, do, to, 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 to rule a country, it comes from bottom, from top down. Now, uh, what you have to do here, if, uh, my humble advice here, because it's a big problem you have. My humble advice is that sit together as soon as possible. And what we have to do, uh, Taleb, if I might say, is to convince that government that that is the right thing to do. And uh, 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 if the government doesn't understand, you have to use pressures. And I finish with that, if I, if I am allowed. Uh, uh, the, the, the President of the United States this last year, in February, made a very strong statement against meetings, incentives, uh, Congress, and uh, not because he didn't understand what travel and tourism is. And all the congresses went down, and uh, Las Vegas and all those big uh, congress destinations lost 30 or 40% of their business. And we bought a page in USA Today and said, how can this government ignore 13.8 million jobs? And explained that very rationally. But that's not dialogue. That's uh -huh. using the media to one, press one up week on later, the governments. One week later, our members had a meeting with uh, President Obama. I don't say that you have to do that here, but maybe the message and the voice should be louder so that the government understands. I think the important point to pick up from Jean-Claude's intervention is that there is no one jacket fit all. Sorry? What may work, no, it, one? no one jacket fits oh, all. Mm -hmm. What may work, in the United States in terms of the relationship and the decision making and the policies may not work in Spain. I come from a small and beautiful country called Jordan. I see the minister there smiling uh, happily about it. You talk about regional uh, policies and you talk about that. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's just one destination that has to act together. You go to, to uh, a, a destination uh, like uh, the Maldives, you can't really talk about 1,200 islands with 1,200. It doesn't work. Huh? So I think Spain has to figure out for itself what is the model that works for tourism. What is not right is that a leading country like Spain has its tourism performance lagging behind 
its overall economic performance. Then that's a signal that says that it's not just due to, to economics, it's due to other factors. Let's look at these other factors. And these other factors must lie in the realm of the structure. Well, thank you very much. I was advised the time is over. It's been a pleasure to host you in this first meeting of the two leading worldwide institutions from the public and the private sector. Thanks for accepting this first to face thank debate. You. And I hope that your recommendations are really left over to some of our authorities to reflect because it's our willingness from a private sector to find this way of cooperation definitely in Spain in this new period that we're facing. Thank you. Thank you.